This is Commander Wayne. How do you do, sir? You got here sooner than we expected. The department said it was urgent. Well, Dr. Lassiter seems to think so. Oh, and you don't, huh? Well, I don't know what to think. There's something odd going on down there, that's for sure. Uh, Boatson, prepare the service bell. Now, we can send you down any time you're ready. I'm ready right now, sir. Inform the Sea Lab that Commander's here, and he'll be down right away. Hello, Sea Lab. Hello, Sea Lab. This is Topside. Do you receive? Over. This is Sea Lab. Go ahead, Topside. Inform Dr. Lassiter that Commander Wayne has arrived. We're sending him down right away. I take it you've never been aboard the Sea Lab? No, I haven't. Well, it gets a little hairy down there at times. I spent three days aboard it myself, but I guess you'll get used to it. I don't suppose you've ever been aboard a submarine cruising uh, under an ice cap now, have you, Skipper? Well, <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. It gets a little hairy down there, too. Well, I imagine so, Commander. The service bell is ready, Skipper. Good luck. Thank you, sir. I'll tell you one thing, Skipper. I'm sure he's that glad I pulled topside duty on this project. Could be he'll be wishing he's back aboard his submarine before this is over. <laughs> Dr. James, company medical officer. How do you do? This is Dr. Renee Perrone, our marine biologist. I'm pleased to meet you. Commander Wayne, Dr. Lassiter is waiting for you in the control room, and Holy will take your things. Oh, fine. I'm right this way, Commander. Well, all the comforts of a luxury liner, huh? We do have some comforts. So I see. Commander You've arrived at the opportune moment, Commander. The object has returned. It's moving closer. How long has it been out there? Uh, two hours. Yesterday it appeared for 15 minutes. Last night, one hour. I sent the mini sub out. They may reach it before it gets out of range. Uh, do you mind? Oh, go ahead. Mile and a half. Does it always move in the same direction? No, no pattern at all. The five contacts we've made, it's neither appeared nor disappeared in the same direction. No motors, no screws. Well, you can rule out the submarine theory, Doc. I already have, at least the conventional ones. Well, do you know of any other kind? No, but I thought you might, uh, some new development. <laughs> I only wish you had a sub like that. I still say it's a whale looking for a new home. No, Renee. Whatever it is, it's not a whale. But it does appear to be to be looking for something. Now, how can you be so certain it's not a whale? The same way you're so certain it's not a submarine. Marine animals have been my life's work. Let me show you. Commander Wayne, this is Dr. Wilson. How do you do? Commander Wayne. Dr. Wilson is our electronics expert. One phase of our operation here is the study of communication and sonar techniques of marine animals. That sound is the voices of a school of porpoise. We've recorded a dozen different kinds of sea animals, including three kinds of whales. Their voices are all within the range of our ultra-sensitive receivers out there. Hmm. Hmm. Now, Look at this. Uh, 
That sound signal is in the 100,000 cycle range, Commander. Ultrasonics, eh? Far beyond the range of the human ear. Can't hear it, we can only see it. From the mysterious object? Far beyond the range of whales and porpoise. Beyond the range of any marine life that I'm familiar with. Now it'll move away. It seems to stop transmitting before it moves out of sonar range. The object has moved away again, Dr. Lassiter. They couldn't get close enough to get a picture. Maddox will be pretty disappointed if they didn't. Maddox? My head diver. He and our photographer are out in the mini sub. I was determined to get pictures of that thing. This is Sea Lab. We read you. Go ahead, Maddox. The object is moving away from us. I think it's some kind of submarine. Whatever it is, it's huge. Tell Dr. Lassadier we're going to follow it over. He knows he can't do that. He's reaching his point of no return. Maddox, this is Sea Lab. You know your tanks are half empty. Return to the Sea Lab at once. I repeat, return to the Sea Lab at once. You're reaching your point of no return. Am I making myself clear? Your message is very clear, Doctor. We'll comply. Doctor, is that Hugh Maddox you're talking to? Yes, yeah, the best engineer and diver I've ever known. Do you know him, Commander? Yes, Doctor, I know him. Range. A couple of minutes more, Sandy, and we'd have been breathing the water. We were out there longer than I thought. Well, we should have taken the extra tanks, like I said. You're always in such a hurry. Not always, honey. Waited 30 years for you to come along. Then you won't mind waiting another 30. <laughs> Sorry, sweetheart. 
Another two weeks to wind up this operation, then we're on our way to Miami. You've got everything all figured out, haven't you? That's why Lassiter hired me. I'm an expert at figuring. What did you find out? Pictures will tell you as much as I know. I only got a couple of long shots, Doctor. Unfortunately, we weren't able to move in for a close-up. I want to see them as soon as they're out of the soup. Don't bother to wait for them to dry. Yes, sir. Well, what do you think, Hugh? Oh, some new kind of submarine. No, it isn't a sub. We know that. How do we know that? The Navy didn't waste any time answering my request. They sent out their top submariner. I think you know him, Commander Wayne. You're not serious. I don't understand. Welcome to the club, Doctor. A lot of people don't understand Commander Wayne. Seventy percent of the Earth's surface is covered by ocean, and we know less about it than we do the surface of the moon. Every day, our crew brings in some new form of life or plant like that to be studied and classified. The forms of life in the sea are endless. You're really serious about this, aren't you? It's a serious problem. There's enough food in the ocean to supply the world's population forever. The sea is a perpetual food factory. And the specimen is under the microscope, Commander. Oh. Well, after a tour of duty aboard a submarine for a few years, a man remembers that there are a lot more interesting things to study than uh, seaweed. Like women, for instance. Yes, if they look like you. And I suppose I'm just the woman you've been searching for. You have a few of the qualifications. <laughs> Why don't you try that? You've got a beautiful mind routine, or uh, the indirect approach, you know, about uh, becoming platonic friends. Well, somebody must have given you a pretty bad time. Wrong again, Commander. I just know a lot about men. I bet you do. For your information, I've lived with five of them. Oh? All at once? Yes. I grew up with five older brothers, and they taught me all the tricks. I heard it all, Commander. Commander Wayne, the photographs are ready. Will you join me in the lab, please? Right away, Doctor. Now, you listen to me, beautiful. I happen to have grown up with a couple of sisters. Let me tell you something. A brother doesn't always tell a sister everything. You might have a few surprises in store for you, Doctor. Shove that under your microscope and study it a while. Oh, Commander Wayne. Uh, just one minute, please. You special guest aboard Sea Lab. Uh, what do you want Holy to cook you for dinner? Oh, I don't know, Holy. Use your own discretion. Uh, good, good. Uh, how about pork chops? Or a big, thick steak? How about some seafood? Good, see. Uh, seafood, you mean fish? Yeah, fish. How Holy gonna get fish? Uh, Mr. Mike, uh, just a minute, please. Where you go with my fish? Your fish? What's the matter with you? These are priority specimens. Oh, for a special dinner. Fish for dinner? Holy, you better check in the sick bay. You think this one shows more details, Commander? Doesn't look like any marine animal I've ever seen. Is it possible the Russians have developed some new undersea craft? Oh, it isn't Russian. Doesn't look like a submarine at all, in the sense that we use the word. Well, what then? You tell me, Doctor. I'm going to send a communicator to Washington and request that a naval unit be sent to this area. Meantime, I suggest that you terminate your research program until we can determine what this object is and what it's doing here. Aren't you jumping to some rather hasty conclusions, Commander? We have no particular reason to suspect that this object represents danger. Maybe Commander Wayne is used to making hasty decisions. Hello, Maddox. Well, you do what you want to do, Doctor, but I still think this is a matter for military authorities. Commander, I have no objection to your sending a communicator to the Navy Department. You can make any request you wish. 
However, inasmuch as this is a private civilian operation under my supervision, I do think it's up to me to decide on its termination. Not just the same as giving orders aboard the Starfish, is it, Commander? Dr. Lassiter, it's returning. It's headed this way. That's the range is two miles. And closing fast. It's at a depth of 60 feet. If it stays on that course, it's headed directly for us. I don't believe you have anything to worry about. If they intended to attack us, they could have done it before. They? I'm receiving the signal again at a much higher frequency. How much higher? It's approaching a million cycles. Don't you think you should secure all watertight doors, Doctor? Well, that doesn't seem to be on a collision course now, Commander. Well, it must have a sonar system that's steering it clear of us. I was thinking about ultrasonic habitation, Dr. Wilson. You'd be right, Doctor. We're loaded with chemicals and gases which could become irradiated by high-frequency sound waves. Sound emergency. Seal all compartments, Maddox. Attention all personnel. Attention all personnel. This is not a drill. Go to your emergency stations at once. trench out there. Maybe that's where it's going. How deep? About a mile in some places. Maybe that explains why we haven't detected it before. What do you mean? Those deep trenches, they make a pretty good place to hide. You're inferring that they or it prefers to remain unknown? Uh, something like that, Doctor. If they wanted to, they could have made an official appearance. <laughs> yards right at the edge of the trench signal stop dr lassiter now let's settle down dr wilson let me know if there's any change did you have much damage in there nothing but a few frayed nerves utility room from control is everything all right in your area dr james well everything except the air it's like a wet blanket Return to normal routine. All personnel retire from emergency stations. Open watertight doors. Resume ventilation, Maddox. Ventilators open, pressure normal. You better get out there and see what's happened to our communication lines. Take Tex along with you. Right. Commander, one of us better stay on duty throughout the night. I'll take the first watch, Doctor. All right, Holding will bring you some supper. Might as well relax, Ellis. May take some time to fix those radio lines. Yes, sir. Guess you feel right at home down here, don't you, Commander? And in a way. One big difference, though. 
Never had women aboard a submarine. <laughs> Do you mind, Commander? Mind? Best looking crew I ever served with. What happened between you and Maddox? I don't like him, don't you? Well, I guess I do. But I really don't know him very well. Well, Maddox isn't an easy man to know, honey. Weren't you his commanding officer? Executive officer. He was our chief engineer. Why did he leave the service? You'll have to ask him that, dear. Something happened on board your submarine, didn't it? That's right. What? I'd rather not discuss it. Or maybe you're ashamed to discuss it. with your request for more detailed information, I am proceeding to the area of the unknown object to investigate. will report my observations upon my return. Signed, Commander Wayne. That's about all else. Now, Doctor, did any of the crewmen volunteer? They all did. You forget, Commander, that our main purpose in being here is to explore the unknown. Good. Maddox will go with you. Maddox? He's the most experienced. the starfish. I told you what would happen if I ever saw you again. Forget it, Maddox. Forget it. I'll never forget that day as long as I live. I've thought about that day for three years, over and over again. Those five men pounding and clawing at that door, trying desperately to get out of that flooding compartment. They were just kids, Wayne. And you were on the other side of that door. You didn't make a move to help them. You know why I couldn't open that door. I only know one thing. You closed that door on us and left us to drown like rats. You think I can ever forget that? Well, you managed to escape. You think I'll ever forget that? Well, listen, Miss Wells. You better stay behind here in the atmosphere. I'll take the camera. Commander Wayne, I take my orders from Dr. Lasseter. Maddox, I don't know what's happened in the past between you and the commander. But whatever your difference is, they'll have to wait until this operation is concluded. Is that clearly understood? Understood. Good luck, Commander. Thanks, Doctor.
Better keep your gear on. Must be near freezing in here. What do you think? This crap looks extraterrestrial. A spaceship? Yes, yeah, completely automated. A remotely controlled probe ship. Probably sent here to study our oceans. Look at this. Looks like a container of some kind. That light feels like a heat lamp. Looks like it might be ceramic or, or some kind of glass. Well, whatever it is, I bet it came from that compartment. Well, it might be a, a fuel tank that's been ejected. Cold as ice. Maybe it's a container for specimens. They might have come here to collect samples of our sea life. Mm. Is it all right? There's something creepy about this place. Yeah. Why don't we get back to the sea lab? Then leave that thing here, Maddox. Until I hear it differently, Dr. Lassiter is still in charge of this operation. He didn't send me along just to keep you company. Killer cycles, barely out for sound, but it's there nonetheless. I'd say it's an instrument package, Commander, but don't ask me what it's for. It'll be something to do with the ship's guidance system, or power plant, or observation equipment, or who knows what. Well, there's one way to find out. Cut it open. Now listen, Doctor. You're a scientist. I understand your curiosity, but I don't understand your logic. Now, this ship must have traveled through space millions of miles to get to this planet. Obviously, with a very good reason. We're dealing with something totally alien. That capsule, as he said, might contain just instruments or something simple like that. On the other hand, it might contain something quite beyond the realm of our understanding. I'm fairly certain there are about two dozen more aboard that ship. That's exactly the point, Commander. We're here to explore the unknown. Now listen, Doctor. I was sent out here with the authority to take over this project if it became necessary. Now, I don't want to exercise that authority. But until I hear from the Navy Department, nobody aboard this installation is going to tamper with that object. Do we understand each other? I believe we do. Good. You might say we've been told off. You might. And you might say that he's absolutely right. It's actually a very porous substance. It's probably a... Probably a what, Renee? It looks larger. It looks like it's growing. Two inches longer than it was only an hour ago. And the signal has increased 10,000 cycles. Dr. 
Doctor, how can a matter like that be growing? It's a solid. Is it? It's obviously a material made up of cells, and they're multiplying, just as they do in living plant or animal. Well, then it's got to be feeding on something. Heat, possibly. The commander said it was very cold inside of that spacecraft. Well, it might be feeding on our air. That wasn't it. Maybe it's the heat. Watch it closely. I'll be with Commander Wayne if you need me. Dr. Wilson, do you think that X-ray would penetrate that shell? I don't know, but it's worth a try. It's almost doubled in size. Ultrasonic waves. If they become intense enough, that acid bottle will shatter. Get Dr. Lysatier, hurry! that door, Maddox? You want to flood the whole sea lab? There should have been plenty of time for both of them to get out. He's a real pro at leaving men trapped in flooding compartments. I told you, it attacked tanks. There was nothing I could do about it. You expect anyone to believe that? I don't give a damn what you believe. You better radio for help before it's too late, Doc. Amphibious animal. Skipper, there's something wrong with the lines at the sea lab. Top side the sea lab, top side the sea lab. Are you receiving? Are you receiving? Over. Sea Lab to Topside. Are you receiving me? This is Topside. Go ahead, Sea Lab. Attention, Topside. This is Commander Wayne. Send this message Office of Naval Operations, Washington. 
Attention, Admiral Bradford. Urgent. Yes. Request you send surface units this area immediately. Equipped with depth charges and... Would you repeat? Would you repeat? Hello, Topside, Topside, this is Commander Wayne. Please repeat the message. Hello, Topside, please repeat the message. Hello, Topside, please repeat the message. The monster seems determined to isolate us. Or annihilate us. Doctor, I think you better close those window guards. If that thing can break out, it can break in. You think it will try to attack us? Doctor, I think that thing will do everything it can to try to prevent anyone from knowing of its existence. Maybe it's not as dangerous as you think. Maybe it's more afraid of us than we appear to be of it. Any animal will defend itself, Commander, especially a primitive one. One thing I'm certain of, Doctor. That thing is not primitive. I bet you it's a lot smarter than both of us. Well, that's all the more reason we should try to communicate with it. <laughs> Think it's frightened of us, Doctor? I had no idea. Do you realize the importance of this phenomenon, Commander? I realize the danger we're in. Anything at all, Ellis? No, sir. Something must have happened to their equipment. More likely, something happened to them. Yes, boy. The surface pumps have stopped. How long will the emergency air supply last? About 12 hours. A little longer if we're conservative. Dr. Wilson has a severe cerebral hemorrhage. We'll have to get him to a hospital at once. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. We've lost contact with the surface crew. I don't understand. Can't somebody go out and see what's wrong? We know what's wrong, Dr. James. We just don't know exactly what to do about it. If you don't hear from me within an hour, you'll know there's nothing we can do about it. Ellis, stand by that receiver. Get me one of your best spirit guns, will you? You can't go out there alone. That's suicide. Do you know what this place is going to be like in about 12 hours after the air gives out? When the air gives out... The pumps are out. We're on the emergency tanks. Dr. James, I have Dr. Wilson ready. I'm going to try to get the diving bell working. Commander, you cannot go out there alone. I'm pretty good with these things, Commander. Okay, Mike. Supply vessel arrive tomorrow. 
Usually drives about noon. They'll never hold out that long. Even if we could hold out, I don't know what they could do for us. We're gonna have to close up more compartments, Doctor. We're down to the minimum now. What about the biology lab? Commander Wayne, that lab is full of valuable marine specimens, most of which will die without air. So will we. Maddox, close off the biology lab. Close it off. And we can close off the infirmary, too. We can move Mike, Dr. James, and Dr. Wilson in here. Commander, Dr. Wilson no longer needs any air. Is he? Any better? Worse. Fever's gone up. Well, a scratch didn't look that bad. No, it's more than that. What's that? From the amphibian? Mm-hmm. It's a carrier of some kind of unknown disease. Unknown to me, anyway. Maybe that explains its reason for being here. Yeah. Trying to escape a plague that's threatening to wipe out its own civilization? It's a possibility. Is that contagious? I don't know. I've prepared a serum that might help, but I don't know. If it is contagious, that one creature could start a major epidemic. Well, you imagine what a dozen of them might do. Uh, have you found what you're looking for? Mm-hmm. Any of the rest of them know about this? You think they should? It's enough to worry about already. How much time do you think we have, Commander? I don't know. Roughly, I'd say, eight hours. Well, I know you'll do everything humanly possible. Doctor, I think you'd better inoculate the rest of the crew. They don't have to know what it is. Tell them it's uh, a tetanus shot or something. If you uh, flex your muscle more, it won't hurt so much. Thank you, nurse. No like black dragon tea, Miss Sandra? No like. No like. How many spear guns do we have in the utility room, Maddox? Oh, about half a dozen. Good. I want you to give me a hand with the welding equipment. You too, Ellis. Yes, sir. We're going to set a trap, Doctor. <laughs> We're the ones in a trap, like rats in a sinking ship, if you know what I mean, Commander. You know, I've just about had it with you, Maddox. Now, you want to go into this thing? Okay, let's go into it. Now, what's that supposed to mean? You know what it means. When are you going to quit lying to yourself anyway? Don't you think I know what really happened aboard the starfish? Are you trying to say you didn't lock us in that forward room? No, I admit that. I had no choice. It was either seal off that room or flood the entire ship. Sure, and left us to drown in a flooded compartment. You managed to escape, Maddox. Why couldn't the others? You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, well, yes, I do. There was an escape chamber in that compartment, Maddox. There was a chance for every one of those men to get out of there. I knew that when I sealed off that room. They knew it too, but something went wrong, didn't it? You panicked, didn't you? You're crazy. Am I? You got in that escape chamber first, Maddox. There was a chance for every man to get in that chamber, but you got there first, didn't you? And you slammed that hatch on, didn't you? Sure, sure, I got there first, but they didn't follow me. They were trying to get out that door you closed. That's a damn lie, Maddox, and you know it. You once told me how you never could forget the faces of those five men, how they clawed and pounded on that door, trying desperately to escape. How could you know that, Maddox, if you were inside that escape chamber? I'll tell you how. Because it was the escape chamber they were trying to get into. You could see them through the window of the hatch. Yes, you could see their faces, Maddox. Just kids, remember? Crying out to you for help, and you didn't make a move. You're lying to cover up for yourself. Am I? Then how come we found the escape chamber locked from the inside when we finally brought the starfish to the surface? And why did we find two of those men with their broken, bloody fingers still clinging to the outside of that hatch? I don't know. Yes, you do, Maddox. No, I don't. Now listen to me. Every man gets scared sometime, someplace. Every man has a breaking point. You can stand just so much, and then you crack. Now, you're no less a man for that, Maddox. 
But listen to me, you're going to be a man, you're going to stand up right now and admit it, or else you're through. Now spit it out! Got into the escape chamber. Something inside me snapped. I slammed the hatch and locked it. And then I froze. I could see them, those kids, trying to get in. But I couldn't move. I killed them, Commander. I didn't mean to. I lose it. That's... Uh, why I left the service after that, I couldn't stand to look the rest of the crew in the eye. I didn't have the guts to admit I was a coward. No one's calling you a coward, Maddox. Come on now. Give me a hand. We haven't got much time. You know something, Hugh? Until a minute ago, I couldn't find much in you I really liked. Now I think I... I could fall in love with you. Come on. Commander Wayne needs your help. Okay, Doctor? Okay. We're ready. Good. Now, be very careful of these trigger lines. Everybody clear the room. Don't come back while I give you the signal. Bat and Arnold's hatch is behind you. I said everybody clear the room. as bait.
Stay back. He's only wounded. Ellis, give me a hand. What do you intend doing? I'm going after it. We'll never get out of here until it's finished. Suit up, Ellis. Yes, sir.
got to get it to the Marine Institute as soon as possible. Welcome back on board again, Maddox. Forget it. You look a little short on crew. Okay, hit him with those tranquilizers, Doc, and keep him knocked out. He still has a lot of fight in him. Let's get to the surface and get the air pump started. Alice, stand by the hydrophones. Be ready to leave as soon as we get the diving bell operating. Now remember, keep this hatch secure. Shot would be enough. Any more might kill him. He's near enough death now. Well, but, Doctor, the commander. Commander says... Wayne is not interested in scientific research. I am. Gear off. Now listen. You see if you can get the pump started. I'll check the radio shack. Go ahead. Too late, you. He's dead. Well, the air pumps are okay, but he's fouled up the winch and the hoisting crane. We can't operate the bell. Are there any explosives on this barge? Might be. They used dynamite to clear away the coral heads when they were building the aquasphere. Why? Won't be able to contact the Navy until the supply ship arrives in the morning. That might be too late. You're thinking about the other capsules in the spaceship. That's right. Let's see if we can find that dynamite. Two of these ought to be enough bullets, Maddox. Sandy, get the automatic timer from your photographic enlarger and bring it to the mess hall. I 
you're doing the right thing here, Commander. I mean, don't you think we should take the opportunity of studying this entire phenomenon before it's destroyed? Doc, do you think the best way to prevent a war is to wait until the enemy drops a bomb on you? I mean, we really haven't tried to understand its purpose in coming here. Doc, maybe you haven't thought about this, but wherever this thing came from, land animals like ourselves could be its natural enemies. Maybe it's here trying to avoid the destruction by man. Well, whatever it is, we can't afford to take any chances. Let's go. Ellis, get some more chains, bind its legs. Now, if I were you people, I'd stay far away from this thing. That means all of you. Not this time, Sandy. I mean it. She might need help. I said no. I'm sorry about the way things turned out. It doesn't matter. I told you that. It matters to me. It matters to you, too. You know it. We can never have anything together now. Don't you? Every time I'd look at you, I'd be reminded of the coward in me. It's over. Don't torture yourself. No, it isn't. Maybe it'll never be over. When this mission's finished, I'm going away somewhere new and get a fresh start. That won't be so easy, Hugh. Maybe not. Facing you and the others, that's not easy either. It's the only way for me, Sandy. You know that. Are you ready, Maddox?
Commander Wayne and tell him the amphibians escaped. Hurry! I can't. The hydrophones won't work now. Three minutes. On his way to Miami by naval helicopter. The others are waiting aboard a supply ship. Where's Dr. Lasseter? He's in the control room. He's pretty upset about having to leave. 
Oh, well, he won't be when he hears the news from Washington. Well, ready to go, Doctor? Commander, I think I ought to stay here and supervise the repair operation. Well, I don't think that headquarters would like that. Headquarters? I don't understand. Well, I contacted the Navy Department from a supply ship. Gave him a full report. The news reached the President within minutes. He's expecting you at the White House at a press conference as soon as a plane can get you there. What am I going to tell him? We destroyed the first creature from another world? It had to be done, Doctor. You realize that. No, I realize it. I also realize how little we know of any other world except our own. It's ironic. Here we are all set to put men on totally alien planets. And we're completely unequipped to understand a creature from one of those planets. That amphibian was our ultimate opportunity. And we failed. We don't know any more now than we did before it arrived. You're wrong, Doctor. We now know that somewhere in space there's a civilization of beings equal to, if not superior to ourselves. We never knew that for certain before. We also know that somehow we have to find a way to communicate with those beings if we ever encounter them again. That's what you have to tell them at the press conference, Doc. That you are the one man with the knowledge and experience to find that way. And that you're ready to tackle the most important research program of our age. Commander, don't you think we're being a little inconsiderate, keeping the president waiting? Did anyone ever tell you you're quite a guy? Oh, now, that's not a very novel approach, Renee. Why don't you try the, um... Oh, you're just the kind of man I've been looking for one. Or perhaps the, uh, the platonic friendship approach. You think you know it all, don't you? Oh, I know a little. <laughs> well, Commander, you still may have a few surprises in store for you. Really? Like what? The direct approach. <laughs> <laughs>